This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is April the 3rd, 2022. This is our Sunday evening message. And it is only Christ can be your personal spiritual trainer. Only Christ can be your personal spiritual trainer. This text is 2 Peter 1, 1 through 21. Now we had a Bible study this morning. And it's not a part two, but it is a section from this. Uh, which is called the blessings of the lesson plan of Christ is everlasting life. So we dealt with 2 Peter 1, 5 through 15. But this is a different topic, but it's still using that same text. And so we want to talk about <clears throat> the blessings of having a trainer. And we want to first just thank God for sisters and brothers who teamed up by family and friends day to day. God bless you for that. I want to thank Brother Fitz for an excellent message this morning. Uh, you know, our visitors uh, were there attentively. They did not leave early. Thank God they heard the entire message. Uh, we had a great feast, uh, wonderful meals. Man, still full from it. And thank God for you all, all the effort that goes in. So much effort goes in preparing and bringing things early and getting things set up. So we thank you all for working together. Uh, you know, all the encouragement you gave to the visitors. Those uh, who gave encouragement to saints that uh, maybe have not been as strong in the faith as they could be. We thank God for that as well. And let us keep working together for this cause because this is what our spiritual trainer has taught us to do. The Lord served the physical feast for the people that were listening to him after he had gave them a spiritual feast of the word. And so let's talk about this trainer. A trainer in anything, a trainer must have complete knowledge of what you desire them to teach you. The less knowledge a trainer has, the worse you are unless you have already natural talent. No one already has spiritual natural talent because we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So that's why in weak churches of Christ and denominational churches you see a marred, disfigured product that comes out of them. Life and godliness has many twists and turns. You must be trained by the best in order to not crash and burn. You must also be empowered with enough energy to complete the journey. When a trainer is training, they may give you fluids. Uh, they may give you proteins. give you certain exercise routines. But one thing they cannot give you. They can't. Even if a crooked trainer gives you drugs, your body still conks out. Your body reaches a point where if God doesn't shut it down, you'll die of a stroke. So your body just goes on natural shutdown and it locks down. That's why you see people falling out on the field, uh, whatever sport they're in. No matter what the trainer gave, can't go on. Christ doesn't have that problem. What Christ gives you is better than anything a man can give you. Even inspirational songs or encouragement. Even if he's went through something. He still doesn't know how it's going to affect you. So this is why Christ is a trainer. He gives you the energy you need to accomplish what he's training you in. So that you can succeed. Because if you don't, you die lost. And he knows that. It's never going to be Christ's fault while we die lost. One point. The trainer is Jesus Christ. Let's validate. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse one very important because some think the apostles are the trainers. No, they're not. It's not their lesson plan. That's what we talk about today. The lesson plan is from Christ. The plan of the lesson to get you to achieve what you want to do. Like a teacher has a lesson plan, hoping the kid will learn to spell, learn to write, learn to do math. Christ knows if you don't learn, you go to hell. The teacher knows you don't learn. You might get a job where you don't need a whole lot of what they told you. But with Christ, he knows now the product's not going to make it. 2 Peter 1 and 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. They get the validation. To them that have obtained like precious faith. That's what the message is to. Not to the world. With us. Very specific. Through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. That's how you gain it. According as his divine power, so it took divine power, has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us 
to glory and virtue. So the interchanging is from the knowledge of God, knowledge of Christ, interchanging because they are one in agreement. Now, the teacher, Jesus Christ. Remember, you need the teacher, trainer. The trainer is a teacher. The teacher is a trainer. E Ephesians 4 and 18. So Jesus is a teacher. Notice, not the apostles. Jesus is a teacher. See, when you kill this, this teaches New Testament saints, don't you try to be the teacher and trainer, because that's Christ's job. Ephesians 4 and 18. Many brethren build up the apostles bigger than they're supposed to be, so they can build themselves up. They know what they're doing. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because the blindness of their heart. This he speaks of the Gentiles who being past, feeling have given themselves over to the civilians to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. That's your teacher. Verse 21. If so be, he did not say, but you have not so learned Paul. Notice they said, you have not so learned Christ. He says, if so be that you have heard him, because many have not, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off Concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It's corrupted. When a body is corrupted, it's considered dead. It's corrupt, not just sick, but dead. So what does that mean? He's dead. He's corrupted, brethren. So it doesn't mean he's trying to no, he's dead. He's corrupted. When Paul speaks of the word corrupted, when you die and you're buried, as he said, you're dead. You don't bury a lot of people unless you want to kill them and be renewed in the spirit. Spirit of your mind. See, this is the teacher and trainer's area where Christ works in. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, not false holiness. Validation of the teacher and trainer Jesus Christ. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Now here's goes this validation. Now Peter shows the validation isn't from he and the disciples. It is from God. So now we have to accept that. 2 Peter 1 verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and command and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Now watch this. So the Muslims a culinary devised fables. Buddhist, culinary devised fables. Hindu, culinary devised fables. Tibetan priests, culinary devised fable teachers. Denominationalism, culinary devised fables. Some teach pray to Mary. Some teach the preachers, talks to God, stuff like that. Culinary devised, culinary devised fables, non denominational. Oh, we're different because we're not Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, but you do, they play the instrument. The, the, I'm not, look at the non-denomination. Tell me what do they do different. I see no difference. See, that's, that's just non-denominational, spirit-filled. Neither one of them have the Holy Spirit. So, we see this, verse 17. For he, that's Jesus Christ, received from God the Father, honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him, from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son. And when we are pleased, and this voice came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. Some may say, well, see, just like you believe in that, we believe Muhammad. Listen, this is the truth. No one wants to hear Muhammad in the saints' world. They'll say, well, how we know? If you know, you know how you know? You didn't tell me, you know how you know? Because if you were of God, you know truth. One of the nicest things you can say to people, it's the, one of the nicest things you can say, when they come at you wrongfully and they challenge you. So how would I know you telling me the truth? Because you read from this book. Because if you were of God, you would know truth. The Bible teaches they hear us because they're of us. Those that don't hear us because they're not of us. You have to tell a person and let them know, you know, you're just not of us. Just let it go. Because you don't have any way. You can't prove because the sun comes up that God made it. It's only because the Bible tells us by faith we believe. So when we see 
Oh, well, God put the sun up there. Okay. They heard it. We read it because he's not speaking to us anymore audibly. We know. When they heard God put the sun up there, the descendants of Adam and Eve, they said, okay, I hear truth. See, brethren, a person can be nice in many fashions. A child, a spouse, a parent. But that doesn't mean they are of God. Your signal is when they hear. Now someone said, well, see, brother, I was like that. I was a difficult person. My wife, we were laughing about a couple of weeks ago. She said, oh, man, you was hard to deal with. I'm trying to get you to get baptized. And she's right. I remember. I think about a lot of times. I said, man, Lord, thank you for not giving up on me because I was giving all time. But at that time, guess what? I wasn't of God. Now I am. I wasn't then. There's no sense you said. Well, it doesn't matter how hard you were at that time. Guess what? You weren't of God. You got baptized. Now you're of God. And you can hear. I think you have to just say, and then you hear a person in the church that won't hear. Guess what? They're no longer of God. They're like demons. I've left. Something's better in the world for me. See, you can't be of God now. Hear the truth. That's what Jesus said. Why can't you hear my speech? Because you're of your father, the devil. That was his children. That were the Jews he talked to. Holy Jews that went to all the different functions. Leaders of the Jews. You can't be both. You can't be not of God and of God. That's no such creature. And so that's called lukewarm. And guess what? It gets spit out of the mouth. And so next point. Validation of the training program itself. Including diet and doctrine. That's what we study a portion of. Of that listed in an overall package in the Bible study this morning. Let's look at the validation of the actual training program. Including what is to be eaten. And how the exercises are carried out. Look at 2 Peter 1. 19. Right where we're at. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Why? Because they witness it and the... Prophets before them only talked about it, not knowing when or well, although they search, it would happen. He says, I was more sure because we are involved. What did Jesus say to the disciples? He said, There have been, see, Jesus, see, Jesus made us. He knew the people he was talking to. He loved the disciples. He loved them. He loved the apostles. But he said to the apostles, too, there's been some great men. Because Jesus, no, I made all I mean, I know great. I've been some great men that would love to have heard what you hear now. They would love to have heard and see what your eyes see. Great men. Great men. Daniel. Daniel saw a lot, but Daniel didn't see the church as it is and as it developed before the apostles. Moses is a great man. Didn't see the church. The Bible says a man born among women, that's nothing better than John the Baptist. Didn't get in the church. See, brethren, one of the things you have to demand as acceptance of a being is the curriculum is respected above anything he says. You have to hold them accountable for the curriculum. You have to. And he says, Where well, until you do well that you take heed. You didn't take heed to what we're going to say. As until a light that shines in a dark place. You treat the word like a light. You in total dark. So a light shines and you feel better. Hey, it's about to shine light. Shine light in. Hey, man, it's good to see y'all. Shine a light in until the day dawn. Then when the day dawn, that blue, that blue like hue comes up. Now your house kind of looks blue. Like light blue. Oh, buddy. People feel, oh, the sun coming up. Especially sick people. Oh, man, look, the sun's coming up. Nighttime is bad for sick people. Sometimes it's darkness. I like got side darkness. Crickets, nothing but darkness. Then a blue light comes in and feels like, oh, the sun will be up soon. Until the day dawn and a, the day start rising off. That's the sun physically and Christ spiritually. But when the sun comes up, it's bright. They can turn off the lights. It's so bright. I say, man, that's good. It's lit now. I can see. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So Peter gives us comfort. It's not private. It's not private. Mm-mm. Not private. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. That's what he means by prophecy. Let's make sure we get this one nailed down. Private doesn't mean that God did not say it to them. He's saying it did not come 
from them. Because God did tell the prophets things private. That's why people lie and say, God told me. But all you got to do is say, now, nah, it's funny he told you that, but he didn't write about it. See, now you know he lied. But what he's saying is, yes, he spoke to them privately. But it did not come from them. Because he says, by the will of man. That's what he means by not private. So guess what? It won't be talked about privately like from a man. So no man come up and say five people read the same scripture and get five different answers. You need to ask and say, and what does that mean to you? Now I'm just saying, but no, no, you said it. It's a very valid point. So what does that mean to you, Bob? And he needs this way because what he's trying to tell you, it's okay for us to disagree. And you need to nail that down. It is not. It's not okay for your children to disagree with the doctrine. It's not okay for your parents to disagree with the doctrine. It's not okay for your spouse to disagree with the doctrine. Your boss, the evangelist, the leadership. It's not okay. And you know what, brethren? At some point, you and me, we're going to have to acknowledge that we can become very sinful, haughty, and prideful, disrespectful to God, mad at what he doesn't let us have, mad at what he gave us. And this is why you get debates in the church of Christ. You can't explain to me why a man would teach 10% plus and any way to tell me to give when there's a clear scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, 7, unless he's greedy for money. You cannot prove me any other way. Clear scripture. But that scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7 is so vague, it's not a dollar value. And he needs money. There's no dollar value in that 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7. That 10% knows whatever you make, I'm getting 10 of it. And he's right, I'm getting 10. That's what he's saying. I'm getting 10. And he doesn't like it. So he teaches a lie. It's nothing about an example. Because he doesn't present it that way. He says, you have a better promise. He says, their promise wasn't as good as yours. So you should give better than him. He's a lie. See, he's telling you what to give. He's a crook, brethren. Don't let him get, don't let him get your family. Don't speak well of him when he talks like that. Don't speak well to your family about him. Let him know he's not righteous. He's not righteous. He's going to get you. He's going to get you later. So he says here that, but holy men, 1 Peter I mean, forgive me, 2 Peter 1 and 20. But holy men, or 1 and 21, should I say, of God spake how? As they prayed hard and thought. No, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now, nah. okay, the key word we want to pull up is moved. M-O-V-E-D. Because you got people who use this. The Spirit just moved me. He's a lie. Because the Spirit not going to move you to speak against what he already Why would the Spirit move you to speak against what he already wrote? Do you do that? You go around talking against something you just wrote. Why would you do that? Just don't write it. You won't have nothing to correct. Move. M-O-V-E-D. G for Greek. 5342. G for Greek. 5342. This is the Strong's number. It says a primary verb for which other and apparently not cognate. Ones are used in certain tenses only. Certain tenses, he says, to bear or carry. Wide application, literally and figuratively. Drive, be driven, endure, go on, lay, lead, move, reach, rushing. Oh, so what the Holy Ghost does, it would come if it was Keith writing, he would press without words upon Keith. Keith, write about the story that happened between Peter and Christ. And Peter just, and he would just pray, and Keith just start writing. Book of Keith, he just start writing. It's not Keith's idea. He didn't know them about it. He wasn't even there when it happened. And he's accurate. Nobody else wrote about it but him. That's what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And some things are synopsis there together. Some things are not. But your brethren have no authority to explain anything in the Bible without a scripture. No authority. They're on the path of a lie, either given to them or conjured up in their own heart. So we hope that will help us. Now let's move forward as we go through this lesson. We've dealt with one part of validation. Let's look at the validation of the new term, the validation of the old. Now look at the new, 2 Timothy 3.15. Because many of the people, the Rastafarians, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindu, they go against the whole Bible, but some attack on the New Testament. Baptist, Catholic, and Methodists attack the New Testament. Jehovah's Witness, the New Testament. They attack it because it's specific. The black Hebrew Israelites attack the New Testament. 
Because they definitely don't know what they're doing in the old. All you got to do is let them talk from the old and you will see, man, you guys don't know any parts of the Bible, do you? Let them just read the Old Testament and tell them, say, now who's that apply to? Watch them get it wrong. When he say the Jews, say, so why does that say the Jews are black? See, you got a problem. Then the white racists, Nazis and things like that, skinheads, which they call themselves, or they accept the term. And so what happens is, is they choose the white side. Everything is white that's right and holy. So both groups are lost. Both groups. And so we have to understand 2 Timothy 3 and 15. But they were, uh, they, you know who they draw to them? They draw to them white people who feel they have been abused. Through governmental systems, governmental interventions, uh, programs given to minorities, where somehow they were cut out of it financially. They hate it, so they go to white supremacy. Uh, Hitler chose white supremacy over all people, including white America. He chose white German supremacy. He would speak and he would stand back and he would know. Let's see if I get my, let me see if I get my love. And he'd say some more. He knew he manipulated that nation because he gave them wealth. You can always get a joker with money. That's not right with God. That, that VW. See, I'm showing you what Christ doesn't do in training and telling exercise. This is what man does. He said, because of the way you look, you're supreme. Look at yourself. Because the Germans had begun to be beaten down. And you can say what kind of conspiracy wrong, but you can listen to him what he's saying in his speech. You don't have to read or study. He's saying, you're the better. He sat back and listened. Here's some more for you. And he deceived them into thinking they were better than other people. And so we should kill the other people. Because they are less than us. Although we do have some other nations rolling with us. They're not German. Did you notice that? See, you, you can always watch a guy. You can ask him. So, so, you know, why you got the other nation with you? If it's on the German. Why can't y'all whoop everybody by yourself? You going to rule them too? See, nobody is calculating. But he says Germans are superior. So, you going to be over the Japanese? Or are you going to be over the Italians? Because they're not. They're not Germans. See, when you hate something, you'll just run with another guy. But don't calculate properly, he's going to eventually turn and say, well, hey, he's Italian. He's not German. Somebody's going to say, say, Hitler. Okay, we didn't use him. It's time to get rid of him. And if he don't, guess what? They would have got rid of Hitler. You know why? Because we bought into with the superior. Have you changed? They would have ate his lunch. He wouldn't have had enough soldiers to keep him alive. Why? Because when the crowd becomes massive, what did God say they do when they go against him? They killed their king after they cursed their God. Did y'all catch it? That's God. See, you know, to, first you curse God. And then let's kill this king. See because. We want a certain rule. Now you got. You, you told us we hit. You trying to go against us. It's more us than you. You can't kill us all. See this is why nations go down. Because they, they going to get that guy. So this is what happens to preachers. In the church of Christ. They build a false following that's coming to them and then later you hear about them getting run off I've seen it happen because they got so big they started telling them well hold on you don't tell them to do we the nation matter of fact here's your pink some good work with you bye I've seen it happen a lot I saw Henry Stevens and tell a guy watch out and they fired him Henry told him watch out you're not standing with God they fired him now he made them think they were superior and they told him bye why is that important Christ's training is based on the doctrine of Christ, not making you feel good about your skin color, your hair texture, how much money in your pocket, how big your building is, how many people you feed. We already validated last week that feeding people was not the love that God wants you to have. Amen. We proved that possible. I can feed people and get my body to be burned Amen. and have my love. So that means, okay, that's not love. That's just I'm, I'm, I'm feeding somebody. I love them to feed them, but I don't love him like Christ wants me to love. Because Christ says I need that soul protected from Satan. 2 Timothy 3.15. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now look what he said. Not man doctrine. Not Hitler. Not black racism. Not America's the great. Holy Scriptures. 
not Jewish doctrine, Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures have your mind prepared. When Christ comes, you have to let go of whatever he says let go of Moses. Moses said you have to hear him. Every faithful Jew got baptized by Jesus. Doctrine that taught salvation. Every faithful Jew that heard it. Because he was waiting on who Moses said, look for. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So without faith in Christ Jesus, you cannot be wise to salvation. Because he says through faith. All scriptures give them inspiration of God. That's it. To validate the New Testament. And it's proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly friends with all good works. He's, he's mature. He's a mature, trained person. He gets his degree, which is salvation. He gets it. And he functions on the earth as such. So, let's look at what else the teacher training does. The curriculum has been validated. Proof the training program works. For all, no matter what condition or when they come into the spiritual program. It works for all. Look at 1 Timothy 4 and 1. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. There is no one that you present in a program that fails. They have to reject the program. There are guys that you can teach to run track, but they just not fast. Keith Henry used to be very fast. He would smoke you. I don't care what you ate. I don't care how many weights you had. Your calves could be bigger than his head. The, the speed Keith told me he ran was smoke the average good runner. Why? Because I got the speed. Christ can bring you in spiritually pudgy, spiritually slow, and you can smoke the fastest saint out there if he begins to back away because he empowers, teaches, and trains something a trainer cannot do in physical. He can't. I don't care how much Gatorade you drank. If, if you ran against Keith, you'd have got smoked. As I said, I'm just going to be real. B Isaac, bullet Bob Hayes, boom, smoking. So in Christ, that doesn't happen. You smoke Satan every time. He's older than you. He's invisible. He knows more than you. And you smoke him like an overweight runner. You'd be passing him up. Look at him. Get back, fool. Keep going. Because the program works for everybody. Only the saint or the sinner that doesn't want it. Fails. It's the only person. So, 1 Timothy 4, 1, Now the Spirit is speaking expressly that in latter times some of the prophet from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience sealed with a hot iron. Look, so they're lying. They're hypocrites because some things they take from the Bible, some things they don't, so that makes them hypocrite. Forbidding to marry. How are you going to forbid a single man to marry? That's impossible. Command to abstain from meat. What's wrong with the pork now? Peter was told, rise, kill, and eat, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe in all truth. So the Bible says meat is created for them who give thanksgiving, which believe in all truth. Who ate the first meal? Adam and Eve. Who ate the first meat off the boat? Noah and the eight. I'm telling you, aren't they righteous? The meat is made for the righteous, not the unrighteous. That's what God has said. I made it for y'all. Let them eat too, but it's for you. For every creature of God is good, and nothing be refused if we receive it thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Your prayer is sanctified. It's separate. So when you pray over a meat cut a certain way, and they said this, and, and you find out that you hate, say, well, that's, that's, that meat give you the strength of Chemosh, the great God. You would say, well, I prayed, so I sanctified it. Oh, you did? Yeah. So I ain't got to do no Chemosh. It's just, it's just red meat to me. And they go, oh, yeah, oh, and you walk off. Because he's like, you can't trap me like that. So when I prayed, I said, thank you, Lord, food. And mm, I ate it, you know. You could eat it if you knew it was to Chemosh, if you could eat it without somebody seeing you to mess their mind up. But you just say, boy, this meat they get a Chemosh is good. You'd eat it. Because you prayed and sanctified. So in my mind, there's nothing about this false God. All false gods are Satan, all of them. Whether they're pictures of men or animals, crickets or stars, it's all Satan. Because the God behind it is Satan. That's who's behind it. Because who's going to get the soul? You don't get to keep your soul in hell. That I means Satan won. That soul died lost. He don't keep it, but you don't either. But you got it, and it's making you feel pain like his is feeling pain. So that's what we got to understand, brother. 
Verse 6, if thou put the bread in remembrance of these things, watch this, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, where to thou hast attained. So you attain. So the nurse, look at the nurse, the word nurse. So here's the diet. The validation, here's the diet. Okay, man, I'm eating this, training, doing my workout. I'm doing my exercises, drinking the right beverage, the Holy Ghost. Because Christ is a trainer and a teacher and the one who empowers. You can't get to the Holy Ghost without Jesus. Verse 7, but refuse profane and old wise favor. Now, women shouldn't get excited because this, there's a certain doctrine that goes with older women that are not righteous. They just start saying stuff, you know. Child, a man on a cell phone, walking the house, baby, he got another woman. Old wife faith. You say, sister, you too old to be talking like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. Just look at him. I'm just saying, sister, that's not right. Judge a soul, that's even some misers. What if he stepped outside because somebody had to confess a very devious sin they did? So, see, now you got to come. Well, I didn't know what you shouldn't have said. So don't say that. You ain't got to teach that. Nobody asked you to teach that. For bodily exercise, prophecy little. See, so lifting weights, big muscles, swashing exercise don't mean nothing. Prophecy little. Because it all turns in the old age at a certain time. One guy died with a body that was perfectly, that guy's stomach muscle looked like somebody drew it. He was a beloved weightlifter. He was in his early 30s and he just died. So I, I'm not going to judge him and say, accuse him of steroids or nothing. It's a lot of people die at 35. Pudgy bodies, skinny bodies. He just died. But when you saw his last picture, so guy looked like he should have won all the awards. The, the sports world more, especially in the weightlifting area, exercise guy, they more. Because they say he was just a nice guy. They said it was going to be his year too. Everybody knew it, but he didn't make it. So bodily exercise profits little, but God is profits unto all things. Watch this. Having promise of the life that now. So what, 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 watch this. What's the promise? Don't get high. You know what that helps your body? See, the doctors are, <laughs> look, Doctors are kind of, so hey, shh, shh, that's too much on that. Because we want to sell this weed. But the doctors will let you know what we really do. If you're not using it medicinally, they will tell you. It's like a cigarette. Be careful. See, you just can't fight the almighty dollar. It's a God. People looking at, man, we making so much money with these weed fields. Let him use it on his leg and all that's fine. We're talking about smoking this stuff. Selling it for smoke. That's where the money at. And so you have to understand the taxation on it. But the doctor will let you know this is still smoke. Puff, puff. Lungs. Ouch. Brain function. A little bit altered. See, but you understand. Other researchers are coming that are money motivated to promote it. And they're battling, battling, battling. The doctors know it is a medicine, but y'all trying to use it recreationally. You know, watch this now. But, you know, just be quiet, man. Don't operate on people. Make your money. We got to make out. Nevertheless, he says, promise of this life and now is. Alcohol can damage you, spiritually and physically. Promise of this life and now is. That's what Paul is saying. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer repose because the truth of the living God, the trust of the living God is what we do with the Savior of all men. Especially of those that believe. So the Lord saves everybody. Especially those that believe. What does that mean? The Lord saves the souls of the believers. The Lord has saved nations from destruction. Physical destruction. Nineveh was saved from physical destruction, giving them time to adhere to God. But they were saved from physical destruction because he said, I'm going to kill y'all. I'm going to come in and kill this place. And y'all going to die in it. But the Jews were saved spiritually. Even when they were flung to the nation like Daniel, they were saved spiritually. And so here's the understanding, especially of those that believe. He pays special attention to the needs and necessities of those that believe physically and spiritually. These things command and teach. Paul says, command them, instruct, and teach about. Break it down. Let no man despise our youth, 
but be thou the example of believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. What is he telling Timothy? Don't let nobody dislike you because you're young, but be right. Don't be in no club, Timothy, chasing girls. Hey, girl, I see you at church next Sunday. Because they hate you because you're young, so be righteous in all areas. Live right. You don't have to walk around in a box, but live right. That's what he's saying, because you're going to prove they're right. You should be this light. If you're a wild young person, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on the hands of presbytery. So, obviously, Timothy had a gift. Timothy had a gift. Like some men were given tongues, speaking different things. So, Timothy had a gift that is laid on. This doesn't mean Timothy going to heaven. It means he has a gift. So that's why he's telling you, you need to study. Just because you got that gift, don't mean you're going to heaven. That's what he's telling you. Just because you got that gift, son, that don't mean you're going to heaven. You need to study and give yourself holy to this. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself holy to them, and thy prophet may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt say both thyself and them that hear thee. So, we see and understand the training program works for all. Now here's a thought. The servants to the teacher and trainer, Jesus Christ, Peter and the others, are assistants who bring the instruction to the trainee, you and I, to give to others. Make sure we get that right. They have no rule over our faith, but are servants that serve the words of Christ to us. We in turn point to their words that you might believe truth as do we. Man, I love God so much right now. Because your brethren told you, you can't go to church in many places. They don't have a rule of your faith. They don't have a rule of your faith, man. Peter going, Paul going to write and say, we do not rule your faith. This is a man that can raise the dead. They can't even preach good message sometimes. Let alone talk about doing a miracle. And they say, well, you can't go to the been told, no, you're not going to stop us from going. No, you're not. You don't run. See, but you, don't, but you know why? Because I didn't want to go to church anyway, period. I love watching on TV. That's what the person would tell you if their heart could speak. I was tired of getting up at 7, driving an hour anyway. I love the TV version. That's what a person would tell you. But a true saint would say, no, nah, man, you can't do that. You can't do that. But let's prove you'll have validation. Look at John 17 and verse 9. John 17 9. The gospel. John 17 and 9. As we're wrapping this up. John 17 and 9. Look at what Jesus said. Validation that they are but servants. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Did you know Christ did not pray for the world? He doesn't pray for the world. No, he doesn't. Non-saints don't get a prayer from Jesus. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. That's who get the prayer. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. And I come to thee. Holy Father. Keep through thine own name. Those whom thou hast given me. That they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world. I kept them in thy name. What is that? Character and authority. Those that thou gavest me. I have kept. Jesus never let the apostle think. You have authority over me. And none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. That's Judas. And now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. Says the same joy he's got fulfilled in them. I've given them thy word, and the world hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So the word separates you from error. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Now watch, they're sent out, but they do not have the authority of Christ. They don't watch it. The Bible is going to say it. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Then they pray out for these alone, but them which also shall believe on me through their word. That's you and I. It's you and I. That they all may be one evil, he says. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. So that we, we all get the same glory, same glory. But we don't rule no one's faith. Let's get some more. Second Peter chapter 1. Let's go back to the text. 
verse 12. 2 Peter 1 and 12. Only Christ can be your personal spiritual trainer. 2 Peter 1 and 12. Therefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think in me that as long as I am in this tabernacle, I stir you up by putting in remembrance, knowing that surely I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able from my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Look at 1 Corinthians 14 and 16. Watch this validation. This is powerful from God, Son, Jesus Christ, given to the hearts of men. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 16. Now watch what he's going to say. What did he says, for I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, I will sing with understanding also. Else when thou shalt bless with the spirit, how shalt thou, he that occupy the room of the Lord, say amen, and I give it a thanks, seeing the understanding not what thou said. So you can't beatbox seeing. It's foolishness. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 16. It's foolishness. You cannot, you cannot understand foolishness. 1 Corinthians 14 and 16. 1 Corinthians 14 and 17. For thou verily givest thanks well, the other is not edified. He's not edified. The other one's not edified. So see, if you give, if you sing a song and you beat bass, and I don't understand you, I haven't been built up spiritually. I just heard a good song. He try to tell these brethren, man, you got to stop that nonsense singing. It's not helping the saint develop. Not helping them develop. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 19. Watch this. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Watch this. And verse number 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. What does that mean? What he said. When we said Christ going to bless you, yea. When we said Christ going to curse you, yea. For all the prowess of God, whether they're good or bad, in him are yea. And in him are amen. Christ is called the amen unto the glory of God by us, he says. By us. Verse 21. Now he which established us with you in Christ had anointed us in God. So the one that established you in Christ, which is the Father, he anointed. The Holy Spirit anoints you. That's what John talked about. You have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Who had sealed us. And given us the earnest of the spirit in our heart. Moreover, I call God for a record upon myself that to spare you, I came not as yet to court. Not for that we have dominion over your faith. He said, not that we have dominion over your faith. We do not rule your faith. It's apostles don't. How can a man rule your faith when the apostles could? They raise the dead. They don't rule your faith. Christ is the trainer, the author and finisher of your faith. They don't authorize and finish your faith. He says, but our helpers, what do we say? They are servants. Christ is the teacher like at a university. And his assistant say, can you hand out those documents? He hands them out. Sometimes the assistant helps check some things. The teacher, he signed you up. You step at him wrong, you might not get out of that with the grades you need. But a help us of your joy. By faith you stand. So he's saying, we don't rule your faith. Christ, that's Christ's area. He gives you a measure of faith to every man. You want to increase? Got a mustard seed? Got a mustard seed? You should be able to get done what you need to get done. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And now we're done. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Please get the Bible study that deals with the curriculum itself. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, watch this, who shall be able to teach others also. That's how you and I get the word. The word does not come from the denominational world. It does not. The denominational world can in no wise validate they are saints by 
having so many contradictory statements. Some baptize, some don't. Some pray to Mary, some don't. How can you all be one? That's impossible. He says here, did Paul hand down to teach Mary should be prayed to? No. Did Paul hand down to teach we should wear titles? No. Christ forbid that. But taking care of that subject in Matthew 23. Your brethren are no exception to the rule. They have to follow the same rule. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that war untangle himself with the fact of this life that he may choose, be pleased him, who are chosen to be a soldier. Some of us want to be a soldier in somebody else's army. Brother so and so's army. Doctor so and so's army, which cannot save. You cannot even be saved under Moses' law. And at one time, that was the law that you have to give to God by. And if any man also strive for masteries, yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully according to the lists. With an S, Jesus got the curriculum, we have to follow him. He's the trainer. But how do you get in his program? 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 1. Now, nah, this great apostle Paul says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you're receiving while you stand, by which also you're saved. If you keep remembering what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died by sins according to the scripture. Paul said, I got inducted in the same program, y'all. I got, I, I'm not in the army and telling you how to be in the Navy. I got in the same program. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He destroys the whole Mormon entity with verse 8. And last of all, was seen of me as also one born on due time. That's a knockout punch to the Mormons. Pow! Whole system is built on a lie. He does that with all the religions. You just have to believe. Mark 16, he's going to destroy all the non-denominational religions and all the denominationals with one punch. What's the one punch of Christ? Mark 16, 15, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. That's it. We're done. Knock out punch. Take out the Mormons. Take out all the other denominations. Knock out punch. Acts chapter 2, verse 36. How do I get the Holy Ghost? We pray. Watch the knock out punch. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know sure that God had made that same Jesus who you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Acts 2, 37. I went and heard this. They were pricking their heart and said to Peter and the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Let's pray. Uh uh, not in the text. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the mission of sins, and you shall see the gift of the Holy Ghost. There it is. Knockout punch. For the promise unto you, to your children, to all that are far, even as many of the Lord our God shall call. In many other words, did he, he who? Peter, the servant to the trainer. Testifying as all, saying, save yourselves from this unto our generation. You who used to be school teachers or school teachers now, you know you have an assistant. You the teacher. You the teacher. They tell the kids out of color or they hand out projects for the high schoolers. Because you, 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 the, you, the, you, the, you the teacher. You the teacher. You the one saying who get the grade, who don't. You the teacher. Christ is the teacher. The apostles and all of us are just servants. Then they they gladly receive the word of baptized, same day were added to them about 3,000 stones. They continue to stand fast in the apostle doctrine, fellowship. That is to walk in the light. As who? Peter in the light? No, as Christ is in the light. The doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. As I see for myself, praising God, have faith with all the people. And Peter added to the church daily, such to be saved. The Lord. Why? Because I have the meaning of your faith. I started, I finished it. I add you to the church. When you die, I write you off. I write you off like a professor. Pass. Next. Because he's a teacher and the trainer. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 or 35. Now, the eunuch is lost. Philip comes up and goes right to explain what's going on from Isaiah 53. Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Moses. No. Jesus. See that boy? Jesus is it. Muslims hate Jesus when you present him as, as the Christ, Son of the living God. Beware of the deceit of the leaven of the Muslims. That is a very, very deceitful organization. Do you know your soul dies lost if you deny who Christ is? 
You died. You checked out. You're wrote off as a failed student. F minus out the box. You don't like the professor, Jesus. Dr. Jesus. You like Dr. Barclay, but not Dr. Jesus. No, sorry. You don't get in. Preachers and Jesus, as they went on the way, they came to certain water. And the union said, see, here's water, but the healing me be baptized. And Philip said, if thou believest in all thy heart, thou mayest. And the answer, they said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Look who got to be the Son of God. Jesus Christ. Teacher, trainer, and the one who empowers. Fills you with the Spirit. By sending the Spirit to do the work. He does what Christ has asked him to do. And now, that's how you have access. And then he goes and rejoices. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. That's the church, Colossians 1, 18. It is the body of Christ, not the body of Moses, not the body of Paul. Whether it be Jews or Gentiles, bond friend, have all been made to drink in the one spirit. 1 Peter 3, 21, it's all about Jesus, the teacher, trainer, and the one who empowers. 1 Peter 3, 21, the life figure wound to even baptism is also not save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of who? Teacher, trainer, and power, Jesus Christ, who has gone to heaven on the right hand of God, angel, authority, and powers. Being made subject unto him. Revelation 2.10. It's in red. Guess who's talking? The teacher. The trainer. The empowerer. Jesus Christ. He says personally. Feel none of those things. And I quote. Look what the writer is doing. And I quote Jonathan. And I quote Jesus. Feel none of those things without yourself. Behold the devil shall cast some in the prison. May be tried. See how tradition. Ten days be thou faithful unto death. I will give thee a crown of life. Opportunity is you'll be baptized. A little triangle to the right under the title of Brother Frizz preaches, teaches, works, Tyler said, putting that thing together. You're touching all kinds of numbers. You call Keith, call him for Frizz. And you can find out where I can go get baptized. I live in Istanbul. Oh, we're going to find a saint. Take it to the bank. We're going to find a saint there. They're going to be glad to meet you, baptize you. But you got to be ready. You got to leave the nomination of them, come out from among them before you are cursed with them. It's real. Understand, it's real. You believe that. You need prayer, you can call the number. If you need to be baptized now, stay standing when we sit down. If you also need prayer, now don't delay. One of the worst things you can do is try to fight your own battle. I tried to fight mine many times. I'm not going to ask for no prayer now. You know, because they're going to think I'm sinning the line. You know, and God whooped like a baby by Satan. Come, Jack, and they'll pray for me. Spirit dragged in there finally. Because who can judge you? We all got our arms. We're all prisoners of Christ. All prisoners. Wear your orange proudly that God has rescued your soul from hell. Whatever you need, come right now. Together we stand and sing Elvis' invitation.